Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to the Point Equestrian. Um, so this is my second training vlog. Uh, this is Eureka. She's the, the off-track thoroughbred that I'm working with. We're hoping to get to the 2020 Retired Racehorse Project and hopefully current events don't end up jeopardizing that. Um, so I've got a lot to talk about. Um, a lot of unexpected things happened since my last video. Um, at the end of my last video, I said that I was going to move farms um, for a couple of reasons. Um, number one was to be surrounded by a barn family where there are more riders. Number two was to be in closer proximity um, to my dressage trainer. And number three was for better pasture. Um, so I'm sitting here in some of our pasture. Um, we've got a whole other half of the farm, so this is a really kind of small window of the amount of space available for the horses. Um, so I'm really pleased with the move. I think Eureka is too. Um, but as you, I'm sure you're tired of hearing, COVID-19 has sort of put the kibosh on any kind of riding or training. So I live in Maryland and um, a stay-at-home order has been issued and all non-essential businesses have been closed. Um, and riding facilities were kind of in a, a gray area. Um, so it's kind of agriculture, kind of recreation. Um, people were successfully able to make the case that exercise is part of essential care for horses, um, but we're perfectly capable of exercising horses without riding them. Um, and riding horses is inherently dangerous. So there's a 0% chance that you can fall off your horse and end up getting hurt so badly you need to go to the hospital if you just don't ride. Um, and people don't like to hear that, um, but that's, I mean, the reality of our current situation. So I've got no problems not riding my horse right now. Um, there's lots of other things that we've been doing in the meantime. So every couple of weeks, the staff at the Retired Racehorse Project give out these little um, webinars. Um, and discuss the pertinent issues that trainers and the makeover face. Um, and the most recent webinar was about setbacks um, and how to handle them. Typically, a setback is a horse or a rider injury um, or problems with like the weather that mean you can't ride. So if you're in part of the country that's normally frozen November through March, you know, things you can do that don't require getting in the saddle. Um, this is one of those times, but it's an unexpected, unprecedented time, and hopefully it doesn't last super long. Uh, but one of the suggestions that they had made was to just tack your horse up, but don't go anywhere. And it will reduce um, anxiety about the saddle, so that so the saddle doesn't have to mean we're going to work now. Um, so that's something that I've been doing, just putting her in the cross ties, putting her tack on her, walking around the barn, making a circle and going right back, taking it all off and turning her back out. Um, and she has, I think because she's got the ulcer issues, she gets really defensive of her stomach. Um, and that way we're able to work on making the saddle not so stressful and scary. So I am able to come to my barn. Um, I'm technically barn staff at this new barn. Um, I cover some feed shifts. I you know, do work around the farm. Um, the other day I was here like fixing holes in the turnout, stuff like that. Um, I'm also here because um, Eureka is on ulcer treatment. And as long as I've been, you know, around horses, the rule has always been whoever pays for the ulcer treatment gives the ulcer treatment because it's expensive and horses don't love, I guess, the taste most of the time, so it's a lot of pressure if you didn't pay for it, you know, when you drop that glob. <laughs> if you're, you know, if they spit out some of it, and it's like there's $12 on the ground that nobody's going to get back, and it better be your $12 instead of somebody else's. So the bar manager is perfectly okay with me coming here and doing that. I think at this stage in the game, um, the importance of exercising isn't as important for Eureka as the importance of handling her every day. Um, she is not by any means rude or poorly behaved, 
but she is young and hot and athletic. So if we let her just kind of sit for a few days, she gets a little bit difficult to, you know, bring in and out and turn out, stuff like that. So it's really like a safety reason that we have to keep her brain thinking about her body, where her feet belong. Otherwise, her giraffe legs will start like teleporting places that don't make sense. Um, so for everybody's safety, um, I'm still continuing to do groundwork and stuff like that. Um, I've got a really good friend who's into horsemanship. Um, the kind of horsemanship where the package looks western and that that's the tack that they use. Um, but the basics apply to everybody. Um, and she turned me on to Meyer Company Ranch Horses, which has a pretty active YouTube channel. Um, and they've got some pretty um, helpful instructional videos, so I've been kind of watching them. Um, and the guy who makes the videos, his name's Tristan, is super cute. Um, and that always helps. Um, and so I've noticed that Eureka likes to just kind of blow through her left shoulder. Um, so I've been working on exercises that will help straighten her out. Um, a lot of the kind of in-hand work that people do ends up being on like a really tight circle. Um, and you stand kind of by their shoulder, um, and Eureka doesn't like that. Um, I think she kind of sees it as a threat, she gets flustered easy, um, so she's a lot more receptive when I stay by her nose. Um, so what I've been doing to not put a ton of stress on her stifles, spinning her in a small circle, is I've been kind of leading her on a diagonal to mimic a leg yield, but I've been doing it backwards so that I can kind of Keep track of where her legs are and I know you're not really supposed to ever lead a horse backwards um, but in the interest of keeping things in chunks that are you know easy for her to digest and understand um, this is where I'm starting but I do it in flat areas I do it for short distances to kind of reduce the risk um, but right now the priority for me is to make sure that everything I'm asking her isn't overwhelming her brain, you know? Um, she's very smart, I think she's an overthinker a little bit, a little bit like me. Um, so, I'll do it correctly at some point. We'll get there, I promise. Um, but right now, I don't see any harm in breaking it down into chunks like this. I also got her to back up over a pole, um, and that was big for me because that was something I never really got my, my old horse, Al, to do. Um, poles were his nemesis, they really sort of stressed him out, so um, he would just kind of explode no matter how simply I tried to break it down, he just hated it. Um, but she caught on relatively quickly. I started by walking her over so that she got her front feet over and then stopping and backing her front legs over it. Um, and then eventually we moved on to sort of getting all the way over and then walking her back feet over it. Um, she does kick the pole a little bit in this video because it's not on even ground. And I kind of cheated because I put it up against the fence. Um, but it's gotta start somewhere. Um, and again, I'll, just like the leg yield, I'm going to polish that up nicely too. Another exercise that we're doing to teach her about, or to keep her thinking about where she's putting her feet, um, is it's like a pickup sticks type exercise. So it's where you take a bunch of poles and just kind of make a mess on the ground um, with no really rhyme or reason to it um, and then walk her through a bunch of different lines, some bending lines, um, and then she has to think about where each foot is going. Um, we've also got lots of little kind of elementary sized cross country jumps around the farm. I don't think there's any that are close enough for me to show you on this video, but um, I've just been kind of leading her over. Um, she really seems to enjoy jumping, so that's been fun. A little something different for her, too, also to get her out of the ring. Um, I've been working on desensitizing, 
So I've been doing some stuff with tarps, um, walking and jogging across the tarp, putting the tarp on her. We were able to wrap her whole face in the tarp, um, but I didn't get that on video because um, the noises I was making were super embarrassing, honestly. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure how she was going to handle it, and she was really good, so I wanted to, you know, get excited, make sure she understood that that was the right thing to do, um, and then I didn't know. What I learned that day was that my voice could make odd, embarrassing noises, and I'd rather not put that on the internet. Um, I also hung a jelly ball out by her stall, um, and I made sure that she was in the stall, um, just to see what she would do with the different noises. Um, so I climbed up on a little step stool and I drilled the hole and I put the eye hook in and then I brought the ball up to her and let her sniff it and hung it. Um, and no drama there. She was really well behaved. And then, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, it's hard to plan because I don't know how long this advisory against riding is going to last. Um, it could be done next week. It could last through July or August. Um, in which case, I think the freestyle class at the makeover might be the largest because people will have had eight weeks to ride their horse between you know that day and um, the beginning of October. So that'll be interesting actually to see what kind of implications all this will have on the on the makeover. Um, I'm gonna work on polishing things up, you know, like doing more correct in-hand work, um, backing over the pole without kicking it the first time, maybe backing over a couple of poles in a row, um, and then I also might try some tricks like bowing. Um, I think it might be cute um, probably work on some clicker training too. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let you know how that goes. Hopefully we'll be riding by the time I post my next video, but if not, I've got lots of things that I'm gonna work on and, uh, keep moving forward. Can't get too bogged down in the disappointment of not being able to ride. Um, and the good news is that we're all in this together. It's not like I'm just, you know, it's not like I'm sick and I can't ride my horse, it's the whole sort of country is shut down over this. But I think it's the right thing to do. Um, so I hope everybody stays safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.